last time we talked and I uh, brought up poetry. I even made a fool of myself and read one of my old poems to you. And you probably went off to your fellow muses. Muse-I? What's the plural of muse? Nah, it doesn't matter. You probably went off to your fellow muses and mocked me. <laughs> oh my god, my writer writes such horrible poetry. Blah, 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 blah. That's not the point. Not of this particular little discussion. So I, I, uh, I gave that some thought. And, uh, um, of course, I, I went back and studied some of my poems. And, and then I, I, I found myself um, sitting down to write my books and obsessing. Once again, obsessing over every fucking word that I wrote. Now, you know, you know damn good and well that I have a bad habit of that, that, that I, I, I tend to get a little bit um, anal about um, how my sentences sound and how they read. And then I found myself going back and, and rewriting everything and making sure that every sentence, every word, every syllable was perfectly planned and and had a, a level of of poetry that it might not otherwise have had now <clears throat> as you know and those uh readers that i have uh know that there already is a certain level of of poetry to my work but all of a sudden uh, it became a little heavy-handed and I realized, as I went back and reread everything that I rewrote, as if I were Emily Dickinson, uh, it can get exhausting. Not just for the writer, but for the reader. And I realized that me as a writer, I have to, I have to give the reader a moment to breathe to relax, to take it all in. And usually that comes in the form of, of uh, uh, more uh, of the mundane. Not the mundane, that's a bad word. You, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's like, um, you, 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 can't, you, you can't, I can't inundate the reader with this, with this high-minded poetry all the time. I've got to give them a moment to go, oh, okay. Whew. All right. Let's... Okay, now I can... Whoo! Oh, boy. That was... Whoo! That was a sentence. Oh, that paragraph about did me in. You know what I mean? And so, as I'm reworking stuff, I have to not just give me a break, because if I go back and, and as I'm, I'm doing my rewrites and, and I make sure that every sentence is special, then all of a sudden, no sentences are special. They all just kind of run together. It's this big amalgamation of, of highbrow prose. So, in the middle of all of this nice, fancy stuff, fancy wordage, verbiage, you gotta give them something plain. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. The cat ran. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Watch him go. Blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. I see. You see what I'm getting at? Blah, blah, blah. You can assume blah, blah, blah means whatever it means, but hopefully you got what the meaning there, Mr. Muse, Mrs. Muse. Cat. 
care to enlighten me? Maybe give me, how about a name? I give and I give and I give and I don't get. Oh, I take that back. No, 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 don't turn your back on me. Come on. I was only kidding. I get, I get, and I get, and I get. That was a close call. Anyway, the blah, 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 you know what I'm talking about. That was improvised highbrow with the fancy accent. I suppose I could have instead said blah, 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 blah. I am losing my mind. I am losing my mind. Anyway, so there's got to be a balance. And I think that that holds true with just about everything involved with the craft of writing. Balance. It's got to be black and white. There's there's got to be there's got to be good and bad. And there's got to be prose and poetry. There's there's got to be depth and shallowness. Shallowness used sparingly. But without that balance you, you're tipping the scales. And when you tip the scales, you're kind of leading the reader. And I like the readers to be able to lead themselves. Mostly because I like to, I, I never want to assume that, the, I don't want to write down to the readers. I don't want to assume a, a, a certain uh, low bar of intelligence. And I, I know the average reader reads at the 11th grade in this country. And no, I'm not writing to that person. But every once in a while, you got to throw them a bone. I think, personally, I've always felt that that um, as a writer, part of my job is to, to help enlighten people. Even if that means that they read a phrase and go, hmm, I might need to look that word up. Or let me reread that to make sure I know exactly what they're saying. But with a balance, you make the reader feel at the same time they're being educated that they're being entertained. Make sense? I, I, I guess the moral of the story is pretty simple. You're either going to write pure poetry or you're going to write prose. That does not mean that the prose cannot be poetic, and it also doesn't mean that the poetry cannot be prosaic. They gotta blend, and in that blending, you give the readers a, a little of everything, and you, you find this, this happy medium. And I don't like to use the word medium because medium implies mediocrity, but you know what I'm talking about. You take these blacks and whites, you mix them together, and you, you develop these shades of gray. Anyway, that's what's going on up here. And now... I gotta put it all on here. Shall we get busy? Shall we get busy? Come on. Come on, me. <laughs>